a cheating player but an even pettier DM who made some not so great choices, and another DM who has major anime main character syndrome. This is Taylor's Tavern Tales, and let's get into the RPG Reddit horror stories. One of my best friends cheated at D&D while I was running the game, and I penalized him for it. Am I the a-hole? My friend, we'll call him K for the sake of this story, as well as some of my friends were playing a D&D campaign together. I was the DM. It's worth noting that I don't feel the need to check dice rolls or character sheets. We all trust each other. This was a secondary campaign, and we would play whenever we were missing people from the main game I ran. At the time, the players had been forced into a death game, with a group calling themselves the Game Masters, and each of them would have to beat their own game for the party to escape. Now on to what actually happened. The players were facing off against one of the Game Masters, when Kay decided to use a suggestion to cause the Game Master in question to turn away from the match for a moment. I rolled their save and got a 14. According to Kay, they had a spell save DC of 15. This resulted directly in the player's victory. Afterwards, Kay said, I didn't just outwit them, I outwitted you referring to me, and explained that the spell save was actually 14. We play meets it beats it. I was livid, but I didn't show it at the time. Later, I sent him this in his DMs. Kay's character will take a negative level, losing everything from their last level up. They will regain this level when the backup campaign party next gains level, which is planned to be after all four of the Game Masters have been defeated. If I catch you cheating again, I will no longer DM for you. I will kill off your characters in every game that I run for you, and you are a part of, and you will no longer be welcome at my table. This is not a discussion. I don't know if this was related, but the player is now talking about leaving the group. I'm worried it's my fault. Am I the a-hole for how I handled this? I don't know if this is gonna be controversial, but yeah, kinda seems like it. I mean, I'm not saying that the other player wasn't an a-hole either, but OP, yeah, th this, is, this is quite an a-hole move. This is a person problem. So the way it needs to be handled is actually communicating to the person, to the player who cheated. You need to communicate with them that this was not okay and cheating will not be tolerated at your table. And this is when you give them the warning, if you cheat again, I will kick you out and you won't be allowed to play at my tables anymore. I just don't think it's great to handle a cheating problem because cheating is kind of like a personality and like a morals issue with in-game consequences because either the player is going to find better ways to cheat or you've just lost a friendship because they're no longer having fun and they feel targeted among many other things that are problems. I will say this till I'm in the grave. Communication is key in D&D and in real life. So OP, if you're going to save this friendship, you need to communicate with this person and this person needs to communicate with you. You need to have an open dialogue and talk about why you can't cheat anymore. And also I think you should apologize for being kind of petty. It's your job as a DM in the position of power, or I'd say more position of authority, to be the bigger person and to communicate with players about things that may not be okay. Because in doing this, you could also lose a friend. And it seems like OP, yeah, the player wants to leave because of what you said to them. I think there's definitely a correlation there. I think there's just a lot to unpack here in your friendship as well as in the game. So I think you guys need to actually sit down and have a chat. I hope it gets resolved and I hope everything's okay. Well, I think I'm gonna move on to the next one. DMPC overshadows party. I've DM'd for a group for a couple of months. We are all new to D&D except for two of us. One of the other, more experienced players decided they wanted to host a one-shot turned multi-sesh micro-campaign. We haven't finished yet. I, who was suffering from a little burnout, wanted to play my first character, Tiefling Fighter, not important. So the party wakes up with memories gone after an apparent fight, and one guy, the DMPC, hasn't woken up yet. Our warlock tries to remove his mask, only for his patron to be scared of the DMPC. We wake him up normally, and we find out that he is a super famous and powerful phantom rebel leader. I fully believe that this is a Persona 5 reference, even though the DM won't admit it. And he wants our help to defeat whatever many evil captains of the king. Cut to the first boss fight. It is just the DMPC show. We tack on a little bit of damage, but this guy didn't need our help at all. Because the next boss fight, the same crap happened. This time, the DMPC grabs the boss by the neck and does 10 Eldritch Blasts to the boss. Next turn, the DMPC summons three animated armors in one action before we end up killing the boss. 
Sorry if this is terribly written, I suck at writing on my phone. TLDR, super overpowered DMPC completely overshadows the party. Yikes. This is a perfect example of a main character DM, where once again, a DM thinks that it's all about them because it's their story and they get to control the world so they get to be super cool. Just play video games. I was reading a bit of the comments and OP says that the DM is a massive anime fan. This felt a uh, very OP anime character. Yeah, it does. <laughs> For sure. It is very reminiscent of the main character is this super crazy edgelord who can defeat everyone with one hand tied behind their back. Oh yeah, and the party's here too. It feels like the DM is just writing their own fanfiction. It feels like the DM is writing their own self-insert fanfiction. Just creating a DM PC and having everybody else kind of be the little actors in their fanfiction. That's kind of funny. It's not good. It doesn't make for good D&D, but it's kind of funny. OP, I feel like you should just have a little bit of a chat with the DM, cause hey, Communication is key, but I don't know. Something tells me that this DM probably won't stop doing this. I'm just getting this slight inclination that the DM is having too much fun and probably won't tone their main character syndrome back a little bit. But who knows, maybe if you have some open communication and tell them how you're feeling and how the rest of the party's feeling, they might actually have some personal growth and change and create more of a collaborative storytelling experience. But who knows? Well, I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe and turn on that post notification bell. It helps if you want to see my face on a regular basis. And if you would like to support me and the channel, think about becoming a channel member or sign up for my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. I appreciate all my patrons so much and you get some fun bonus content on there. So sign up if you want to. And I am super excited. I am a finalist for the Crit Awards. If you don't know what the Crit Awards are, it's a TTRPG award ceremony to highlight some of the cool people in this space. I am a finalist for Best Up and Coming YouTube Channel, so if you would like to vote for me, so hopefully I can win, that would be insane, click the links in my description below. It'll take you to a Google form where you can vote for me on there. I'm not the first category, so you have to scroll a little bit, but I would appreciate it so, so much. The Crit Awards are at Gen Con, which I will be at, so if you see me there, come say hi. Well, that's all for now. I will see you in the next one.